God. God is faithful to every one of his promises. Let's stand for the reading of the scripture. God loves us so much. I'm coming from several different um, books of the Bible as I read this scripture. First come from Isaiah chapter 28. Then I'm going to Job. Then Ezekiel. And then I'm going to go into Matthew. Isaiah chapter 28 and 2. It said, Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one which as a tempest of hell and a destroying storm, as a flood of mighty water overflowing, just cast down to the earth with a hand. And Job 12 and 15, it says, Behold, he withholdeth waters, and they grow up. Also he sendeth them out, and they overturn the earth. And we go into Job's 37, 5 to 13. He focuses on, he causes it to come, whether to cor for correction or for his land or for mercy. Therefore, thus said the Lord, I would even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury. And there shall be an overflowing shower in my anger, and great hailstone in my fury to consume to consume it. This is Ezekiel thirteen thirteen. In the book of Matthew, chapter eight, twenty four to twenty seven, it said, and "Behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves." And he, talking about Jesus, was asleep. Then Jesus arose. He rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The subject of today's lesson is understanding the inclusive ways of God in the midst of a pandemic. Let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Lord, we come before thee as children before your throne. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, touch us now, Heavenly Father, that we'll be able to receive what you have for us on this day, that we will understand your inclusive ways, Heavenly Father, in the midst of this pandemic, we'll know as to what's going on and what you will have us to do at a time like this. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, prepare our hearts and our mind that we'll be able to receive and understand clearly what you will have us to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. amen. You may be seated. God is a merciful God, and surely God wants us to know as to what's going on today in the United States and around the world. He wants us to know as his children what's going on in the midst of this pandemic. In the scriptures that we just read, we have to ask the question, why are we experiencing storms all around us in the midst of this pandemic. Why are God bringing so much destruction throughout these United States of America? Why? We rebuild and God destroys. We rebuild again and God destroys again. Why, God? Why? As children of God, we want to know why, God, why? So God wants us to know, so we'll know as to what we need to pray for and what we need to do as his children. God is faithful to every one of his promises. 
Why is America experiencing storms all around about her? Does God truly control the storms as a, a man would do by him? Is God a merciful God? Does God control the floods also? What does the Bible say about these things? Do you really want to know the answers to these questions? Do you really want to know the answer to these questions? Listen and hear what God's word says. Because God wants us to know. But you, it will not be easy to hear because it's hard to hear a word of truth. Especially if you do not have love for truth. But God wants us to know today. This is the way it is. And many people just don't understand what God is doing. But the word says there is no prophecy of the scripture, prophecy of the scripture for any private interpretation. No prophecy see, of the scripture for any private interpretation. But God has given us instruction as to how to study his word. In the book of Isaiah, it's telling us that it must be what? Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's the way we study the word of God and get to understanding what God is saying. So then we don't have to guess about it, about what God is doing. But we have to have love for truth. And God wants us to have love for truth. But God wants us to understand what's going on today within these United States. Anytime you take a hurricane to come in into Louisiana, going 150 miles an hour and bring much destruction there, then it go work your way into other parts of the country and go into Mississippi and Tennessee and then part of North Carolina, South Carolina, Virginia, D.C., New York, and the other parts on the East Coast and bring so much destruction. We need to know what's going on, God. Help us to understand what's going on. What do you want us to do? in the midst of a pandemic where people are dying, people are sick, and all this going on today within these United States. But yet we have a loving God and a merciful God, but he's faithful to every one of his promises. So God help us to understand. Do you want to understand what God is saying? I believe everyone here wants to understand. I just read some scripture, and they were based on precept of God. I took this scripture and that scripture and that scripture to get certain precept. So I'm going to reiterate those scriptures. I first went to the book of Isaiah chapter 28 and 2. It said, Below, Behold, the Lord has a mighty and strong one, which as a tempest of hell, and a destroying storm as a flood of mighty water overflowing shall cast down to the earth with the hand. So God has a mighty and strong one just like he just cast it down to the earth with the hand. It said God does that. In the book of Job chapter 12 to 15 it said behold he would hold up the water and they dry up. Also, he sent forth them out, and they overturned the earth. That's another precept. Let's go to another precept. Precept in Job, chapter 37 and 13. It says, he calls it, it to come, whether for correction or for his name, or for mercy. So he calls the storm to come for correction or for the land or for his mercy. Sometimes we cry out for rain. Lord, give us rain. We should be crying out there on the west coast now with all those storms and this dry over there. 
in the West Coast with all those storms in, 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 that's destroyed, um, fires that's destroyed so much land over there because of the drought that's within the, those areas. But it says he, he does it also for correction and for mercy. Therefore, thus said the Lord, I will even rent it with a stormy wind in my fury. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13 and 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, I will even rent it with a stormy wind in my fury. And they should be an overflowing shower in my anger. And great hailstone in my fury to consume. That's another precept. In the book of Matthew, chapter 8, verses 28 to 27, it said, And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. And he, Jesus, was asleep. Then Jesus arose and rebuked the wind in the, in the sea. And there was a great calm. That means he could calm the sea. He could, bring, he could bring the storm and he could calm the sea. God can do all of that. But me and Marvin said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Yes, it's about God. But scientists are going to say they're going to control this climate change with through climate change. Somebody needs to tell these science is the truth. Yes, we can do certain things. But you can't do nothing that God said he does. God controls those things. And somebody needs to be able to tell the scientists, you cannot control the climate. Yes, you can control how much stuff we put in the atmosphere because of your burning this, that, or the other. But you cannot control a storm that goes 120 150 miles an hour and then he have this front going this way and that front going that way to control that storm to go where it needs to go. You cannot do that, man. Amen. And man needs to understand the way of the Lord. Who are they going to get it from? They have to get it from the people who have love for truth. To be able to share this type of word so we'll know what God is doing and what God will have us to do on this day. God is a merciful God. When you go into the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is one of God's prophets. We all have heard of Jeremiah. And some even call Jeremiah the crying prophet. Yes, he would cry because he knew what was going to happen and why things was happening. He was crying out for the people. And it said God has to have a vessel to cry in. Because God loved us so much. God used Jeremiah as one of his prophets to cry because he loved us so much. Is God merciful? Amen. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verses 1 and 2, it says the word that God has speck unto Babylon and against a Chaldean by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among nations, set up a standard, publish, and conceal it not. Say, Babylon is taken, Bel is confounded, Merchandah is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded, her images are broken in pieces. He wrote that for Babylon. In the images of Babylon. Here we can see a standard was made for Babylon in the images of Babylon. That means that any nation conduct itself as a Babylon. That is the image of Babylon in the past. If you conduct yourself as a Babylon had conducted this herself, then you become an image of Babylon. It's talking about any nation to conduct themselves in that way. Babylon was known as a hammer. Babylon used its military might to shake things 
the way it wanted to shake them as a hammer. That's the way the scripture recorded as a hammer. It used perverseness and oppression in a mighty mind, the military, to check things. And God said, publish it and conceal it not. When it said conceal it not, it means it always will be. It's a standard that was established and a standard that will always be. And God wants us to understand that standard. In Jeremiah chapter 51, verses 1 and 2, it said, Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon, against them that dwell in the midst of them, that rise up against me of destroying wind. And I will send spinners, send Babylon spinners, and they shall fend her, and shall empty her land. In the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. So you see that word dim, it means in the image of Babylon. I will send them fenders. At the time of their trouble, it'll be all around about them. This is God's standard for Babylon and any nation that conducts itself as a Babylon. Oh, did you come here this morning to hear a word like this? But I'll tell you what, this is the word that God wants us to hear today. He wants the people to understand this word throughout this land so we could be able to understand what God is doing. Nothing just just that happened because it's going to happen, this is going to happen, it's going to be, it's going to be. No, <laughs> we have a part to play in this process. We have a part to play in this process. And God wants us to understand this. And that scripture said, what now? It said, and will send unto Babylon's fenders that shall fend her and shall empty her land, for in the day of trouble they shall be against her round about. And sure that we know there's a lot of fending went on during this past week. Storms was all round about us. We must understand what God is doing. We can take a look at the history of these destroying winds. You know, when we when the news today is uh, Pakistan, I mean Afghanistan is in the news today. If we go back, back to, in fact, we're getting ready to celebrate the what the 20th anniversary of 9/11. The question is, what have we learned as a people since 9-11? What have God conveyed to us, but we've been so busy and have not heard what God has been saying to us? Or have we made some of the same type of mistakes? Do we find ourselves in the same predicament that we were? Back in 2001, when you really think about it and see what's going on today, you can begin to understand what we must do to, in order to turn this around in the name of Jesus. But, prophet, you know, you're talking about the body to us, the body of Christ. Yes, that's what it's all about. It's about us. Amen. It's about us, his people. Call by his name to humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then I, does America need to be healed? Yes. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. We need healing in this land. Amen. And that healing only going to come from God yes. in the name of Jesus. But if you go back to 2003. And when we made the decision to go into Iraq and destroy, bring so much destruction over there without provocation, 
you can go back 10 years before that in 1991. We, we had a, a, a quick guff war over there and thousands of people was killed over in there. That was under the other Bush, the father. And we celebrated in the city of New York Back in 1991, they said it was just like the 4th of July. Ten years later, what happened in the city of New York? We're getting ready to recognize the anniversary of 9-11. Destruction was brought to the city of New York back in 2001. In the same city, where we celebrate the, the war, the Gulf War. Uh, did you come here this morning to hear this type of word? Maybe not, but God wants you to hear this in the name of Jesus. <laughs> God is a merciful God. And God had me as one of his prophets to warn the leadership as to what would happen if we went over there without provocation. You know what happened in 2003? Let me give you the history about God destroying wings, okay? Because some of probably don't even remember this kind of stuff, so I'm not going to belabor all of this, but I was just talk about uh, just a short period of time. In April 2003, because we went to the war without provocation, so God sent some destroying winds to the United States, according to Wikipedia. About one month later, okay, in May 2003, we experienced 401 tornadoes hmm. from May the 3rd to May 11th in 2003. According to Science Daily, the May 2003 tornado outbreak sequence in the United States was a series of tornado outbreaks that occurred from May 3rd to May 11, 2003. There were 401 tornado reports in 19 states, 1,587 1, reports of large hail, and 740 reports of wind damages. More severe weather broke out in a week, in that week, that period alone, than any other week in the history of the United States of America. Your God controlled all of that. That's something that, you know, we just see this stuff going on and say, well, things are going to happen. Things are going to happen. You know, that's, that's also been storms that have been headed towards the United States. A big major storm, they all went back to sea. All went back to sea. That happened, and when you when you, President uh, Barack Obama said, "Well, I'm gonna end the war over in Iraq." And the year after that, those storms headed towards the United States. They all went back to sea. No major storm, real major storm, the United States didn't experience in 2010. <laughs> Isn't that something? That was God. God controlled all of that. You can check it out. You find that to be fact. Big major storm headed. In the Atlantic, headed towards the United States, boom, all go back to sea. That's another one. Boom, all went back to sea. Oh, that's another one. That's all went back to sea. None of that stuff hit us. But in 2011, we got to deal with some upstream stuff. Huh. We got to we got to deal with countries over there because you don't want to deal with Egypt and Yemen. Some of you never heard of Yemen, but you heard of Yemen then. Uh, Morocco and all these nations, they, everybody want democracy and we're going to emphasize, we're going to push this thing down in this process here. Uh, and, but God, we had all kinds of storms headed our way again in that process there. Oh, but didn't President Trump was elected president and he had a general, a general called General Mathis. Oh, 
General Mathis was through. He, you know, what he did, he said, okay, we gonna drop a big bomb over there in the Middle East. It was the biggest non-nuclear bomb in the history that had been dropped. Boy, did no storms begin to come. One after another, destruction, destruction. This is the way God does it. Because we are using our military might trying to shape things the way we want to shape them. And that's a sad commentary, but you have to understand as to what to pray for in the name of Jesus. Because God is very faithful to every one of his promises. Oh, you didn't come here this morning for this. <laughs> it's so silent in the room. It's probably quiet out there too. But don't go away. Stay here for a moment. Because God wants you to know. God wants you to know what's going on today. Because people are hurting and people are suffering throughout the world today. And God, I pledge allegiance to the flag of Beyonce and to God, right? A nation under God. If we are a nation under God, we got to do what God called for us to do. And who's going to do that? Nobody but Christian. That's right. Nobody but who have a love for truth going to do that. To humble ourselves and seek his face, what does that mean? That means we have to understand the way of the Lord, the inclusive way of the Lord. He said, I make peace, I create evil. I, the Lord, I do all those things. God hates evil. But he created evil. When you study the scripture, you find evil is created as a reward for the one who does wickedness. He said, Judah rewarded wickedness to themselves. <laughs> they went out there and done wicked things, and God rewarded them with wickedness. God used wicked people to do wicked things to other people who have done wicked things. <laughs> well, a box, well, a fix. But that's the way God works. And God wants us to understand this. And God wants us to understand the power and authority that he's given unto us, his body. And God has standards. If he already had pronounced, I'm going to do this. It says, the scripture says, if he said he's going to do this, but if that nation that he said he was going to do these things to, if they will repent, he will repent of the destruction that he said he was going to bring to those nations. <laughs> Don't we have a mercy for God? Yes. So, what we must do, we must understand the way of the Lord. It began with us. First of all, we have to search ourselves. <laughs> Begin with us. Us. You. Amen. Me. Yes. Us. Do we really love God? Well, you know, we've been talking about everything being conditional in our teaching condition. If you do this, God said he would do this. If you love me, you'll keep my commandment. It's all conditional relationship, right? And then we just talked about what a friend we have in Jesus. Huh. We talked about how some people say that, but they have not met the criteria to be called friend. Jesus wants us to be called friends, but we have to do what he commands us to do to have that type of relationship with him. Do we want to be friends of Jesus? Yes. I say amen. amen. Can anybody else say amen to that? Amen. We want Jesus to call us friends. Yes. Jesus has given us power and authority to do supernatural things in his name. Now what happened is that, okay, uh, the prophet just come up and gave us just a few scriptures about, you know, the way of the Lord and how God does this and other than, you know, the... Uh, do, do we really have that type of power? Do you really believe it? 
you think God was just joking when he had these prophets to pen this in this word? It's for us to know. His inclusive way, his inclusive ways. He's merciful, but he's faithful too to every one of his promises. He loved people throughout the world. And people are dying today in the United States of America and around the world, and many of these people do not have to die in the way that they're dying. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's about the love of money. That's the root. It's something when you live in a democracy, a government that for and by the people. That would be a wonderful government. Amen. If you had a government that really is for and by the people. For that to happen, you got to keep something in check and we fail to do so. It's called capitalism. We have capital in check. Now, that can buy anything you want to buy. For the most part. It can control the media, what you hear. In the news reporters or the people that's there on the news, they, they're very good. They're good presenters. They're very good and very articulate and, and, and many of them believe what they report. And so they're very good at that. So they say this is the way it is and we believe this is the way it is. But the reality of it all, that's a truth out there that's not part of that communication that's being conveyed. And God wants us to understand that. He wants us to take time out and hear from him. And that's why he did not give us the spirit, the spirit of fear. It's about fear now. Fear have overcome so many of us that we've been so fearful and God did not give us the spirit of fear. Amen. So concentrately, here we are with this fear. Oh, if I don't do this, I'm going to die. I'm going to catch this, that, or other. And the reality of it all, that's the truth out there that has not had the opportunity to go forth because of the love of money. And this is real. Oh, you didn't come here to hear this this morning. But God wants you to hear it because he got people dying within these United States that don't have to continue to die. He have people dying around the world today that do not have to continue to die. Only thing we have to do is to have love for truth. And then ask God to speak to us and he'll show you very, very clearly. It start this moment. This moment. So you have to know what to pray for. You have to pray that truth will go forth in the name of Jesus. And God shine light in some dark places. You know you got people out there working today. They are out there working Trying to go make truth go forth. But then, you know, after Jesus fasted 40 days, you know, Jesus had fasted 40 days, and, and then Satan came to him and said, you know, you see all that out there? If you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all those things. And can you imagine Somebody, someone coming to somebody saying, look here, if you just support uh, this disposition that I have, you know, you was, how much, how many, you, you got just, you got five million dollars in the bank, let me tell you something. You like to have five billion? <laughs> That's all you have to do, to do what I said do. You have people who are sold themselves to the devil Amen. for the love of money. Yes. And we're hurting. We are in pain today. Amen. God wants us to know that. Now, 
what God wants us to do now. He wants you to hear that. Is this all inclusive? The information gives a foundation. The scripture, as you study, you find all this just ties up in that process. And then the more you search, you'll find that the truth is out there where people are being used in a minor way, but they've been silenced. Silenced. I'm the very knowledgeable people. People know things, but yet they've been silenced. Because money can silence people if the people in position to ensure that that voice go forth is cut off. Uh, you know, I know this probably would never be posted on, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook may cut it off. But nevertheless, the word must go forth. Amen. If we want this land to be healed in the name of Jesus, we have to understand God in Cruz's ways. Amen. We have to understand that God is the one controlled these storms. And there's a lot of people that are hurting today in these United States. They lost all the material possession that they have. And they're suffering. But if we continue the way we're going, there will be more destruction coming to this land. That's just the way of the word of God. That's what he says. But he said, if you hearken to my word, I'll give you peace as a river, righteousness as the waves of the sea, and terror will not come near you. Amen. That's his word. Amen. What a promise. Is God faithful to every one of his promises? Yes. Do you want to get in a position where you can receive those type of promises of God? Amen. And God wants us to understand the only thing that we have to do is to have love for truth. And the spirit of truth will come unto us. And it can empower us. Yes. And give us that power and authority to shine light into dark places. God has given us that type of power. That's why Jesus said, the work you see me do... You'll be able to do that work and greater work because I go to the Father. When you study the word of God in John chapter 17, you find that we've been given the same glory that Jesus had when he walked this earth. The same glory. And that's the power in the name of Jesus. And God wants us to understand who we are. We must not fear man, what man can do to us. Amen. We must have the real love for truth. And be able to speak truth in the name of Jesus. We must humble ourselves. Many people today are in church and it's just like business as usual. Meaning that you, we'll pray for the people that that suffer and we'll send some financial aid to them. And then there's another disaster. Then we'll send some more financial aid to them. Then there's some more disaster, some more disaster to take place. More hurting going on. But God wants us to understand it does not have to be that way. God wants us to understand who we are and the power he has given unto us. But one thing has to take place before that really take place is that we have to have love for truth. And I'm talking now to people that in a position that's in the pulpit that preaching and teaching the word of God. We have to understand this is a spiritual warfare. We've been discussing this here at Victory Truth Church about a spiritual warfare. He said warfare. He's called it warfare because that's what it is. You know, when you talk about warfare, there's some things that go on. You got some people out there on the front line, right? But you got some people that does other things that the people on the front line, they do not do. 
One of the things in warfare, uh, they have something what they call reconnaissance. And as a reconnaissance, they have planes that, that will fly over the enemy territory and see what's going on with down the land, and they will take pictures. And then the picture would be processed, and they say, well, they got this and this, that, and other. You know, God has reconnaissance too. Prophets. Yes. Prophets. They're reconnaissance. They know what's going on. God share with them. But if you think you know everything, because you're in the position of a pastor, you got not going to listen to the, the reconnaissance. And as a result of this, some things are going to go on that you don't know what the enemy is up to. And God wants us to understand why we are compacted onto one another, that each part done the effectual work of that part. We can't think too highly of ourselves. We must be able to respect one another and have a love for truth. If you have a love for truth, we all need to be falling down on our knees in the name of Jesus and say, help us, Lord. Yes. At a time like this, yes. help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, because we got loved ones out there that's suffering now. Help us, Lord. We got loved ones out there that are dying now. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We got leaders that do not feel you based on your precept. Help us, Lord. But we got people that they have what they call spiritual advisors that are not advising them based on what the word of God said. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to, to really humble ourselves, Lord, so that we can appreciate one another. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, because we want to spend peace as a river and righteousness as the waves of the sea. And, Lord, we don't want to continue this thing, fight terror another 20 years. Help us, Lord Jesus. Yes. Lord, we know that you are a merciful God. You're faithful to every one of your promises. Help us, Lord. We want to be everything that you call for us to be in the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord. Lord, strengthen us now, Lord. We want to be everything that you call for us to be. We want to die to ourselves daily. Help us, Lord. Lord, we want to learn, learn how to acknowledge you in all our ways. Help us, Lord. Lord, we don't want to deviate to the left or right. We want to focus on the mark that you set before us. Help us, Lord. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that stretches us now, Lord. Help us, Lord, to shine as the brightness, as the firmament. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be the salt that you call for us to be. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to demonstrate the power of the living God, recognizing not, it's not us that's doing the work, but the power of the living God within us that does the work. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord. At a time like this, with so much suffering going on in this land. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to ensure that the counsel of the living God go forth to the leadership that they would learn to feel you based on your precept. Help us, Lord. Oh, God is a merciful God. I'm so glad. I ask God, what would you have me to do, Lord? What would you have me to say? What would you have me to preach on this day? And in the because I realized this, and it's so unfortunate. There's a lot of people today, even in the midst of all this going on, that in churches today, and they'll walk out of there without a clue about what's going on around them. Why there is so much destruction that's going on. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that God will wake up his people. Because when you study the scripture, you find that a spirit of deep sleep has been poured out on his people. And many people have been covered. Because you know, when we talk about the ten virgins, we know they all slept. Yes. They all slept. It's talking about us today. Many are asleep today. And God wants us to wake up. Wake up.
in the name of Jesus. Amen. We've been talking about God inclusive ways. God inclusive ways. This is part of the ministry that God has given us the, through the church readiness ministry. We have a number of videos teaching on that site. Much of what I just shared with you, this is nothing new. This morning, early, I went to the computer. I said, okay, God. Oh, there it is right there. This was done back in 2012, I think. Just kind of recapping. And that's what I'm saying today. It's the same thing. Yes. Amen. It has not changed. We're in the same disposition. Terror is still knocking on our doorstep. We're still experiencing destroying winds. And it's not over with yet. It's up to us. And God is looking for us today to move in the position that he called for us to move in. Now I call up Pastor Richmond and she'll take you from here. Amen. Hallelujah for his word. Amen. On Amen. this morning. Amen. As he was preaching, the scripture come to my mind that uh, judgment must first Begin at the house of God, and the judgment begins with us. Where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? So we're the ones who's going to be judged. It is up to us. Like it says, uh, if my people, which I call by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. So if we will do it, we as the people of God, we who say we are called by his name, because judgment begins with us. And if we don't get it right, where's the sinner and the ungodly appear? They're going to appear before God, and God is going to say, Depart from me, you know, he's going to throw him into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. So we got to get it right, people. We've got to get it right because the world is looking at us. The world is looking at us. And so often they don't see. They don't see Christ. They don't see God in us. And that, that is a sad commentary on the body of Christ. That is a sad commentary that when they see us, when people know that we're Christians, when we tell people, yeah, I'm a Christian, it's like, so what? No biggie. Well, you know, what is what is that? That, is, that don't mean anything to me because they see so many people who are say they're Christians, but they're not Christians. They say they're Christians, but their light is not shining. So we and, and the leadership is going to be held accountable. The leadership, you know, we were talking about that this morning in Sunday school. The leadership is those who are preaching, those who are, are in a position of leadership within the churches. We're going to be held accountable. God is going to hold them accountable because they're, they're leading their, his people astray. They're leading people astray. So we got to wake up. We have got to wake up and just stand on the truth and the word of God. So thank God for that word on the day, prophet. Amen. Yes, thank God for that word because so many people don't believe that God does control the storms. Amen. He does control the storm. Man, think that he can do it. Here we are again at Victory Truth Church. More progress. You can see the drive, the framing is up and it's all the way at the center.